Yuck, what an ugly day. <laughs> but any day off is a good day. <laughs> Yeah, this thing is ugly as can be, but it works. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, kind of thinking about thinking that I've been neglecting you guys lately. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's kind of weird uh, when you're happy <laughs> and kind of pathetically content. <laughs> You know, it doesn't leave a lot to talk about. <laughs> Thought about doing a preparedness video, um, which is great stuff. I mean, it's very important for a for a MIG toe to be prepared. Um, remember that uh, that uh, uh, earthquake in Haiti. Uh, remember how the UN or whatever those alphabet soup organizations like. I don't know if the Red Cross even bothered landing there, but uh, the women would get food and the men got nothing. <laughs> so that's one of the things about preparedness. I mean, I mean, I, I'm I'm inclined to say that it's like tw three or four times more important for a man, especially a MIGTO, to be prepared because we're not going to get any help. <laughs> I mean, uh, food is real important. Uh, water, even more important. <laughs> um, a means of heating uh, a small area in your home or cooling if you uh, live in a place where uh, where that's important. Now, I'm kind of uh, slacking on uh, on water. I mean, I've got tons of water filtration. I've got a local water source. And uh, I've got a nice... Uh, Thing where I can purify like thousands of gallons of water but I only stock like 12 gallons and that is plus what's in my hot water tank <laughs> oh that's any real prepper would be saying oh invention you suck <laughs> store a lot of gas I got uh, 10 gallons here 11 in the garage and plus another 20 in the shed so I could commute for a long time on that oh well, this is the uh, little backup power system I assembled back when I lived in the condo. And I could pull my big Kirby vacuum cleaner out and vacuum my entire condo on this thing. Chargers is sent on there. Power strip. Um, uh, basically, let's see how much power we got. What? I just recharged this thing. That... I might have a bad cell. I'm going to have to look into that. I've been so busy with the house and getting everything set and moving in that a lot of my old preps from my condo days I've sort of been neglecting. Hmm. So I'll have to look into that. One of those batteries is probably dragging all the others down and needs to be replaced. And if I don't replace it, they're going to it's going to destroy all the batteries. Well, I'll take a tw quick trip through my shed. I'll be right with you. Remember that big, huge, double pine tree that was like a tower and it was really skinny and tall? Well, unfortunately, we had a good rain, I mean, windstorm a couple of weeks ago. And the, uh, the thing laid over, pulled the pulled the root ball out and landed on my fence over there. Barely dented it though. And now I've uh, cut and split most of that wood. And it's in the center of my wood rack here. And I am going to do something about this. You can't let the wood just sit here in the rain. I'm going to have to put up some plastic temporarily and uh, and then I'm thinking about something <clears throat> similar to a uh, greenhouse, and then it would make a solar, a solar uh, dehydrator for firewood. It's very important if you're into preparedness. I mean, it's very important anyway to have a way of heating your home off-grid 
you know, when the utilities fail. And it's, uh, because it can get real miserable if you don't have a way of staying warm. And if you're fighting the cold, then you're... Your body will be weakened, and then you're going to be vulnerable to diseases and shit like that. Okay. Yeah, as I was saying, you know, when you're happy, it's like kind of, <laughs> you don't have a lot to complain about, and then you end up neglecting your YouTube channel. Yeah, here I've got uh, an 80 mile per gallon scooter. Um, I'd have to put a battery in it, but I, and I've got some batteries that'll work. And um, so basically I could get this thing going and with what I have here at the house, I could commute for about three months. Um, <clears throat> with uh, with just the gasoline I have on hand. Then of course you got the uh, this thing this is a electric bicycle a couple of lithium-ion batteries and man this thing freaking screams I mean it's dangerous it's so fast it actually uh, it'll actually go 40 friggin miles per hour <laughs> And the wheels on this bike are not designed for that kind of speed. And I've lost some spokes in the past when I hit a couple of bumps I wasn't prepared for. And I had to put them back together again but uh, and adjust the spokes. But uh, if I really were going to commute on this thing a lot, I would need a heavier framed bicycle. But I suspect, and I, I commuted from the condo to work, which is about hmm, nine miles... And and the uh, battery uh, indicator didn't even drop, like maybe one or two volts. It's and this thing is like vastly has vastly more range and power than I needed at the condo, but um, probably about right for commuting to work here from the house. Um, if you're into preparedness, of course, and if you, even if you're not. <laughs> um, it's very important to have a way if the grid fails or if you lose access to the grid. For example, you have a personal disaster and you can't pay your electric bill or your water bill. And then it gets cut off. You're going to have to have a way of dealing with your human waste. And basically, this is something I came up in the condo. Within the condo, you got a, got a little porta john back there. I don't know if you can see it. But it's a five gallon bucket with a toilet seat. And then these are wood chips for suitable for like a pet or gerbils or something like that. But uh, purchase that. And as long as you don't crap in the same place you uh, take a leak, um, you can throw some wood chips over your, uh, your uh, turds and basically it'll be very innocuous. It won't hardly smell bad at all. And then you can find a place to bury that shit. <laughs> and um, when it is mixed with carbon like that, it'll compost very well. And uh, yeah, very little disease spreading. And if you you have to collect your urine in a separate container. And when you, because that is ready, you can take that stuff and put it right on plants. As long as you don't do it too much. But if you do it all the time, you're going to need to dilute it like... Uh, 10 or 15 to 1, if I remember right. Mm. Yeah, good stuff. It's another 6 gallons of water. I, I really need to get some more. Um, in the Seattle area, where it's raining like crazy half the year, <laughs> sometimes you can neglect water, but uh, but really, you got to have more than that. So, But anyway, I've got a nice water filtering system. It's a big, huge water uh, filter sock, plus some chemicals and and I've got this pool shock which is uh, powdered uh, bleach basically and you can you can basically mix up hundreds and hundreds of gallons of uh, full strength bleach with this powder and uh, then you can purify thousands of gallons uh, of water um, and basically kill anything that's going to hurt you 
and then just let the let the water sit out somewhere uh, for the wa uh, chlorine to evaporate out and then you can drink that with no problem chlorine is a really nasty poison it's better to decrease the amount <laughs> that you drink I've got a nice reverse osmosis water system in the in the house and uh, I drink I do all my cooking and drinking with that water and uh, so it's better for you uh, it's also important in any kind of dis in emergency situation to be able to cook and of course have something to cook uh, just even this uh, for example this uh, six gallon bucket of hard red wheat here that'll keep a guy going for a month uh, the calories count on those things are just insane um, and hard red wheat plus uh, beans of any kind pretty much uh, beans or uh, 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 lentils um, those plus the beans the beans plus the wheat equal a make a complete protein and you technically don't need meat although you would certainly miss it more wheat down there um, yeah then of course you got uh, powdered eggs and uh, and canned butter and combined with the wheat which I would run through my wheat grinder and I could make so many pancakes it would just be insane then of course you can have uh, uh, sugar down there gotta have sugar um, got salt and but the important thing is a way to cook um, I've got a nice um, Korean War era stove it's like a tent uh, wood stove and you could actually set that up in the fireplace I bought that when I was at the condo um, and I had a little decorative fireplace but if I was in a situation where I needed to get some heat um, I could actually set that up in the fireplace and I would get with only the back end of the thing stuck up in the fireplace and then I could get a lot of radiant heat off of the stove itself into the room much better than actually using a uh, the fireplace itself but for cooking I've got a bunch of canned heat similar to this stuff right here it's like sterno um, but I've also got a nice gasoline stove and a propane stove and a bunch of camp stoves but this gasoline stove it's white gas stove uh, for Col you they call it Coleman fuel but you can actually uh, cook with gasoline over in Saudi Arabia I ran one of those for months and months and it's also important to have a, a valve rebuild kit on this thing uh, otherwise if it goes bad your stove's gone so it's important to have parts to repair the things that you use but um, with a stove like this you can on one little tiny bit of uh, one little tank of fuel it's I don't know it's um, you could probably cook like for a week um, so it's like a it's like a pretty decent thing and, and with a gallon of fuel you could cook a lot <laughs> let's put it that way um, mostly what I did in Saudi with it was uh, was just uh, heat up coffee and stuff but if you're doing some serious cooking you'd need some gasoline but if a car runs out of gas and gets abandoned um, there is still likely to be fuel or gasoline either there in the tank um, or you could actually pull the fuel filter out and get a significant amount of gas out of that and people who punch tanks and then just drain it and then take off they wouldn't be able, they wouldn't have the time to actually take the fuel system apart and drain the fuel system so you could get enough to cook out of that another thing about my truck it's EMP proof I could run that thing even if we had like a major grid down situation that wiped out all all the electronics scary stuff but um, I could run that on diesel of course and that's what it is it's a diesel but I could run it on um, on transmission fluid as well from like uh, other cars cars that have been abandoned most of 99 percent of them are like automatics these days <clears throat> I could drain the automatic transmissions and uh, run my truck on it. It would smoke like a bastard but it would go. 
Uh, of course, confiscation would be a real problem in that situation. If we had like a major EMP situation, man, I think my best bet would be to pull the fuel pump, the big injector pump, out of that engine and hide it somewhere and say, sorry, it's broke. <laughs> and I sold the uh, injector pump on eBay. Uh, you're welcome to drag it off, but the engine's thrashed. You won't be able to do anything with it, you know. <laughs> then maybe, just maybe, they would let me keep the truck. But when there were, there's an emergency, governments have a nasty habit of ha feeling that they have the right to confiscate people's personal property. <laughs> so the thing is, is to make it look like you don't own anything. <laughs> uh, but it, and then conceivable they could even go through the houses looking for food and stuff but uh, by then I will have buried most of this stuff <laughs> but you know if, if things get that bad boy <laughs> we're fucked <laughs> but um, so basically yeah I'm just uh, just doing a little cleanup in the shed just having a good day enjoying my day off I do love a day off <laughs> um, Let's see, cooking a little bit of chicken soup. Um, whenever I cook a chicken, I always, uh, well, I often make soup out of the bones. Good way to save a little money. And that's going to be dinner tonight. <sighs> yeah, it's an ugly, rainy, hideous bastard today. But a, any day off is a good day. But what I was saying earlier is that when things are going really well, um, what the heck do you talk about? <laughs> Basically, when a guy is happy, <laughs> it kind of makes for very uninteresting videos. Yeah, ooh, man, that smells awesome. Time to pull the bones and throw the veggies in it. Then in an hour or so, I will have dinner. Well, I guess I'll let you guys go. Sorry about the boring video. <laughs> Later.